Hi there, and welcome to today's class. For today's class, we'll be looking at how to apply the laws of indices to solving problems. So in our last class, we discussed the concept of indices and the seven laws of indices, all right? If you missed the last class, I'll leave a link to the last class in the description of this video. But for today's class, we'll be looking at how we can apply those laws to solving problems such as this. So we'll take our first example. So given that 5 to the power x times 25 to the power x minus 1 divided by 1 to 5 to the power x plus 1, we are asked to simplify this. If I'm to simplify this, what do I do? Now, here's the idea. Your idea to simplify this would be, as much as you can, express each of the terms in the same base. All right? Whenever you can express the different terms in the same base, it makes it easier for you to solve them and, of course, bring the, um, the laws into action. So what's my first tax? My first tax would be this. If I look at this, this is um, base 5. The index here is x. This is 25. The index here is x minus 1. This is 1, 2, 5. The index here is x plus 1. So I'll look for a way to express all the bases in the same, um, to express all the bases as the same, which would be um, base 5, basically. So I know that 25, I know that 25 is equal to 5 to the power 2. And I know that 1 to 5 is equal to 5 to the power 3. If I put these values here, this um, question becomes 5 to the power x times 25 becomes 5 to the power 2. So in place of this, I will have 5 to the power 2, which is 25, into x minus 1 all over 1 to 5, which is x to the power 3, it becomes x to the power 3, which replaces 1 to 5, all to the power x plus 1. So I have this. All right, so I'm now at this point here. What next? From here, I'll now bring back one of the laws. From here, I'm having this as 5 to the power x multiplying. If I look at the product power law, this, we said if I have two terms of this nature, that we can multiply their parts. That's this one here. So this becomes 5 into 2 times x. I have 2x. 2 times minus 1, I have minus 2. All over, the same law ap applies here. So I'm having 5 into 3 times x is 3x plus 3 times 1 is 3. That's the product power law. So I have this. All right, so what next? This is equal to, now recall the, um, the multiplication law, which says that if I have the same base multiplying, then I'll have to add their paths. So I have the same base here multiplying, I'll add their paths. So add the paths here, what do you have? This becomes 5 to the power x. Um, since I'm having the same base multiplying, just add the path. So plus, this one here becomes 2x minus 2. So I have this all over, this becomes 5 into 3x plus 3. So I have this. All right. So work on this. What do I have here? This will be equal to, this will be equal to, um, I will expand this. So plus into this, plus into 2x is 2x. And of course, plus to minus 2 is still minus 2. So I have this. All right. So you see the same thing. If I work on this, this becomes 5 into x plus 2x gives you 3x and then i have this as minus 2 all over for this i have x of 5 into this becomes 3x then i have plus 3 so i have positive 3 so i have this all right so i'm now at this point here what's my next tax if i look at this i can see that this term the numerator is being divided by this term, the denominator. And also, if you observe well, you see that these terms are of the same base, which is base 5. If you now bring in the division law, division law says if I have two terms dividing of the same base, we just simply do what there, subtract the part. So from here, this is equal to, so this is equal to, from here, I now have, um, so from here, I'll now apply the division law of indices, which says that if two terms of the same base, which in this case is 5, if they are dividing, simply subtract the power. 
the power here, so I'm having this as the same base, which is 5. Subtract the power. The power here is 3x minus 2. Subtract it from this one here. The power here is 3x plus 3. All right. So it becomes this minus this. So in a case where the um, index here has a plus or a minus sign separating terms, it's very crucial that you use what there? A bracket. So put it in brackets, else you miss it out. All right. This is now equal to 5 into, this becomes 3x minus 2. Minus the 3x gives you minus 3x. Minus plus is minus. Bring down 3. So I have this. All right, simplifying further, this is equal to 5 into, collect like terms, 3x minus 3x. So I'm taking like paths, 3x minus 3x. This gives you minus 2 minus 3. Minus 2 minus 3. So this is now equal to, if I work on this, I'm having 5 into 3x minus 3x gives you 0. Minus 2 minus 3 gives you minus 5. So I have this. Work on this further. This is equal to 5 into 0 minus 5 is minus 5. At this point now, I'll now bring up, I'll now bring up the concept of the negative index law. The negative index law says if I have a negative there, what do I do? That I'll take the inverse. So to eliminate this negative here, I'll take the inverse of this one here to this part here. So this is called the negative index law. So I have this. Simplifying further, this is equal to I have 1 all over 5 to the power 5 gives you. 3, 1, 2, 5 as your answer. So I have 3, 1, 2, 5. So this becomes the answer to this question. So this is how we solve this question. All right, let's take a second example. So this question here says um, simplify this, all right? This is the third root of 64 out of power minus 6 all to power 1 over 2. So simplify this using or combining the different laws of indices. So how do you get that done? First things first, I would focus on the term in the bracket. That means I will just focus on this 64 r to power minus 6 all to power 1 over 2. For now, focus on this. So what do you have here? Uh, we looked at what is called the product power law. All right, where in this case here, we said for a case like this, where I have different terms all being raised to a power, we said this power can affect each of the terms here. All right, this is equal to from here, half will be affecting 64, so it becomes 64 to the power 1 over 2, multiplying this one here, r to the power minus 6, all to the power 1 over 2. So in a case where I have different terms, all right. All to power, all to all raised to a certain power, this power here can affect all of the terms. So in this case, it becomes this to this, which is this, and then this to this, which is this. All right. So what I choose to write the half inside the bracket or outside, um, similarly, are the same thing. So this is equal to now what this one means here, of course, this to power one over two means the square root. So I'm having the square root of 64 multiplying this one here. This now becomes the square root of, better still, instead of using square roots here, we can just multiply straight. That becomes r to the power minus 6 times 1 over 2 gives you minus 6 over 2. All right, it still works that way. From here, this is equal to, the square root of 64 is 8, because 8 times 8 gives you 64, times r to the power from here, 2 here, 1, 2 here, 3. So this gives you r to the power minus 3. So r to the power minus 3. So I have this. That means if I combine this, I'm saying that 64 r to the power minus 6 all to the power 1 over 2. But I'm saying this will be equal to um, this 8 r to the power minus 3. So I'll have this one here on simplification. Next up, remember that this one here, we took the third root. So if I take the third root, it means that the third root of 64 r to the power minus 6. So adding your 3 here, third root 
or the power 1 over 2, this one here would be equal to 8 r to the power minus 3 all to the third root. Um, same thing here. Okay? Same thing as the third root. So I have this. All right. And that will be equal to, um, again, this third root can affect each of them. But to better simplify this, what I'll do is that I'll express this one here in index form. Expressing this in index form means um, better, okay, so it becomes 8 r to the power minus 3 or to the power 1 over 3. That's how you express third root in index form. So take this to this and then this to this. That's equal to 8. So this one here, 1 over 3, multiplying this one here, r to the power minus 3 into this 1 over 3. So I have this. And this will be equal to, this one here means the third root of 8. So third root of 8 multiplying from here, I'll have r into minus 3 times 1 over 3 gives you minus 3 over 3. All right? Minus 3 times 1 gives you minus 3 over 3. So I have this. So this is now equal to, the third root of 8 is equal to 2. Because 2 will multiply itself 3 times to give you 8. 2 times 2, 4 times 2, 8. Alright? So 2 multiplies itself 3 times to give you 8. Multiply by, I'm having R into minus 3 divided by 3. Gives you what there? 1. So I'm having this as minus 1. They cancel out. So R to the power minus 1. So I have this. If this is true, this will now be equal to 2 times, express this one here um, as a fraction. So eliminate the negative. All right, negative index law. To eliminate the negative, I'll take um, a reciprocal. That's 1 all over r to the power 1, which is equal to 2 times 1 all over r to the power 1 is r. So if I work on this, this is equal to 2 times 1, 2 all over r. So my answer is equal to 2 all over r. So this is how I solve this question. Let's take one more example and then look at something else. All right. So let's look at example two. Um, I'm having 225 to the power 1 over 2 plus 85 to the power 0 plus, okay, multiplied by 256 to the power minus 1 over 4. So I'm asked to simplify this one here. What do I do? First things first, um, if I look at this and with a good knowledge of multiplication, I know that there is no one common base that I can express all of this under, all right? There is no one common base that I can express all of this under. So in a case where you don't have a common base where you can express everything under, what do you do? You deal with them one after the other. So I'll take this one first. This one here is 2 to 5 to the power 1 over 2. Now, first things first, we looked at what is called the um, fractional index law. And from the fractional index law, we said this one here would be equal to... Now, what this means is just square root. So it becomes... We said this is the nth root. And this is 2. So it becomes the square root of 2, 2, 5. Of course, square root of 2, 2, 5 means I'm looking for that number that will multiply itself to give you 2, 2, 5. And that value is 15. So I have this. So I've dealt with the first one. Pick up the second one. I'm having 85 to power 0. Now, 85 to the power 0, I'll simplify this one using the zeroth index law, which says that any number or any term raised to the power 0 is equal to 1. Well, except 0. So from here, this to the power 0 is equal to 1. I have this value. I've dealt with this. Next up, pick up this one here. I have 256 to the power minus 1 over 4. How do I deal with this one here? First things first, I can see a negative. So I'll apply the negative index law, which in this case would be, to eliminate the negative, I'll take the inverse. So 1 all over, this now becomes 2, 5, 6. The negative goes off, I'm having 1 over 4. All right, so I have this concept. But then, this part here, uh, we still have to deal with this part here. We we'll use the same concept here, that we used here which is the rational index law. So this will now be equal to 1, 
one all over um one of one over four here out it means i'll take the nth root which in this case becomes the fourth root of two five six now what this means is that i'll look for since the number here is four okay when the number here is two it's called the second root the second root is also known as the square root all right so it means i look for a number that multiplies itself twice to give me two to five which was 15. in this case now the number is now four so i'm looking for the fourth root of two five six that means i'm looking for a number that will multiply itself four times to give me two five six and that number is four because four times four times four times four four times gives you two five six so hence become hence this becomes one all over the fourth root of two five six is four all right so i've dealt with this term individually let me bring them back if i try to bring them back this will not be equal to so first things first this one here two five six to power one over two that gave me 15 so i'm having 15 okay plus 85 to the power zero 85 to the power zero gave me one so i'm having one multiplied by this one here two five six to the power minus one over four that gave me one over four as my answer all right so this is now equal to i'm having 15 plus one that gives me 16 yeah times i'm having one over four so what on this is equal to 16 times one is 16 all over four and that's equal to 16 over four gives me what there four because four times four gives you 16. so my answer here is four so this is how we solve this problem all right so if you enjoyed this class please you can get more of my classes on my website simply visit www.junaimmanuel.com forward slash courses and you see my course on jam slash wired classes all right so from there you can get access to over 100 um, jam um, classes including past question solution there on my website all right so just visit my website there www.junaimmanuel.com forward slash courses and order for the course see you in the next class